Hey guys, we have just signed a new Turkish young centre back uh, by the name of Met Shetin. Was that his name? I didn't write it down. I think it was Shetin. Shetin, something like that. Um, and a lot of people don't know anything about him. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even know he existed before we signed him. But I have spent quite a lot of time uh, on looking him up, uh, checking him out on YouTube a bit, uh, looked up some stats. I had a follower helping me, very thankful for that, it was great help, um, I, as I said I checked out some highlights on YouTube, couldn't watch any full games, if you know anywhere I can do that, I don't think there are any, but if you know any, I would be grateful if you could hit me up on direct message or on in the comments. But yeah, from what I've gathered so far I was thinking that I'd make a video and well, explain a bit who he is and what I think about the the deal. So I watched, I, I saw the highlights from two games that he played in the fir Turkish first division. Um, one was versus Basaksehir, I think Basaksehir, and the other one I can't remember versus which team that that one was. Um, I think he played very well in both. Um, in one they conceded two goals. And those were one of was uh, off of a corner, which wasn't his fault. Another player lost the marking completely, and they scored. He couldn't do anything about it. And the other one was on a free kick, and I don't know if he gave it away, but yeah, uh, from quite a bad angle. So like it was the goalkeeper's fault. Anyways, um, other than that, I thought he did some great um, covered the spaces very well and did some really good interceptions, and he did all the good defensive work. But in that game, he wasn't wasn't anything spectacular. It was his first team debut, I think, from what I've found, kind of. Not sure about that one, though. The second game was versus Basak Sekir, I, I think it was. It's, they have a green logo and something. If I'm wrong, comment down below. I think that was the game. He was man of the match in this game, and they got... the They only got five clean sheets from what I could find in the league that season and this was one of them they got eight wins in the league that season and this was also one of them and they won one nil he didn't score the goal or anything but he was great he had a shot saved on the line he had a couple of good inception covering the spaces he was just generally really good that game and that was his second game in the Turkish first division. And he was like 20 or 21 by then. So, yeah, he was very young and still very good. Um, and as I said, he got the man of the match according to sofa score ratings. I obviously couldn't watch the whole game, but like from, from the sofa score ratings that they have, um, he got the man of the match alongside with another player. Um so what I could get from the YouTube videos and from um, the highlights I watched from those games is, is that he's very strong physically. He's 190 tall, he's fast and he's very strong. Um, very good physical player generally. Um, he reads the game very well as well. I have um, a paper here to, to remember everything. I have some stats as well, so that's why. Um, he reads the game very well and he covers up the spaces in behind the back line so well. Kind of like a Van Dijk type of player, I think he is. Obviously not as good, but like that, that kind of player, I think. Even a Manolas. Um, he, he runs in behind at the right time and like keeps the offside line but still covers so that they don't get tr through. And um, yeah, have saved a lot of possible opportunities that way, I think. Um, the only concern I have, I saw he he did some kind of mm, meh defending in one on one, so I'm, he might not be very good at that. Not sure, but I only saw him in two one on ones, and one of them he still got the ball, but it was like better player probably could have gotten past him. I think. Um, other than that, I don't have any. I haven't seen anything bad from him. Uh, some Turkish giants want, wanted him. I think Galatasaray, Fenerbahce. Can't remember if it was Besiktas or it was some some other team. But I, I know there were like two or three Turkish giants. Uh, I I know for sure Fenerbahce and Galatasaray. 
And I mean, if they want him, they obviously saw some potential in him. He's considered as one of the brightest centre-back prospects in Turkey at the moment, I think. So he is held very, very good uh, regard, I think you say, um, in his homeland. We only pay, paid three and a half million, so I think it's worth a gamble. Because either he explodes and becomes like the next big thing, kind of like Manolas, or he won't become anything great, but I think we can still get the money back um, if if he wouldn't be as great as we thought we, he would. And even if we lose a couple of million, like one or two million, I think we can lose max on this deal. I don't think it's a big problem. We have that kind of money. So I definitely think it's worth a gamble. Um, he, he has been at his club, I think it's called... Genserbirgli, Genserbirgli, something like that. I can't pronounce it. I'll call it Genser. Um, and he he has been there quite a long time, but he didn't start until last the season. And he came in and saved a, a struggling uh, Genser side. Uh, they weren't like relegation, I don't think, but they were kind of struggling, weren't performing very well. Um, and they were kind of known to be very vulnerable defensively. Um, and yeah, he has played 23 games this season and only let in more than one goal four times and kept 14 clean sheets. So only four times they've let in more than one goal when he's played. And, well, he's kept 14 clean sheets in 23 games, which means he only conceded in nine of his games that he played. That's very good, especially considering that they were quite vulnerable defensively, like a bad defensive side. Uh, in total, they've conceded 15 goals while he, he's been playing, which is 0 0.652 per game. Not a lot. Uh, we conceded way more than that last year. Uh, obviously, he won't come in and be a starter. He will probably maybe play the Europa League games, maybe play some cup games or... Some games versus like Lecce and sites like that. No disrespect, but like, I think those are the kind kind of games that he will will play. If he will, if he would have played every game and kept this rate up of uh, zero point six five two per game, they would have been shared best defense in the league with twenty two goals conceded in thirty four games. In the games he didn't play, uh, there were eleven of them in the league. And they conceded 13 goals in those 11 games, which is 1.18 per game. Quite a lot higher from 0 0.652. This shows that he was... They were, I think, the second or third best defensive side in the league. Even... Oh, and this was basically all thanks to... To Mert. Um, if they would have kept this ratio up of um, of 1.18 per game, they would have been the 7th best defense in the league with 40, 40 goals conceded in 34 games. That's almost double the 22 goals they would have conceded in in 34 games if Matt would have played all, the, all his game and the ratio would have been the same, obviously. Um... I only, it says that he played 25 games, but I only counted 23 of them because one of them he went off injured in the 20th minute and um, they let in three goals in that game, but uh, he, while well, he was on the pitch, they hadn't let in any goals. So that's why I didn't count it because I felt like it was a bit unfair. And the other one he was subbed on in like the 85th minute or something, so I felt like that's just bullshit to count that one. They did keep, keep a clean sheet, so that's kind of not in his favor more and the other one is in his favor i guess statistically um but anyways he has 88 percent uh he, he wins 88 percent of his aerial du duels to compare manolas wins about 65 percent obviously it's in a much lesser league but um, it still shows that he is dominant in this second turkish division uh, another very good stats stat is in his 57 career games, he has four yellow cards and zero red cards. These stats, th these last couple of stats, I got from from my follower. 
the the ones until about how many games he's played and how many goals he's conceded. Uh, those I I found out. Uh, so I just wanted to to say that so I don't take all the credit and they get none. Uh, but yeah, in the 50, 57 career games he's played, he's gotten four yellow cards and zero red cards, and he gets an average of 6.2 get, uh, tackles per 90 minutes. Uh, Manolas has 4.6 tackles per 90 minutes, so that's almost two tackles less. Um, and I think this shows, first off, Ar Ariel Duos, Duels 1 shows he's great physically. Um, yeah, basically he's great physically. Um the four yellow cards and zero red cards in 57 games is not a lot. And considering he gets 6.2 tackles in per game, means he tackles quite a lot. And I'm guessing that means he is quite successful in his tackle. So that contradicts the thing I said that I was um, scared of him being bad in one-on-ones. Maybe he is really good in one-on-ones. Just the, um, the highlights I saw were like, he was the kind of half mistake there. Um... But the fact that he does put in 6.2 tackles per game and has only 4 yellow cards and 0 red cards means that he must um, be quite successful because usually when a defender misses a tackle they get, need to give away a foul because otherwise they'll be through on goal or they'll be in a very good opportunity because the centre-backs are usually the last resort. And then they usually get a yellow card and him only having four yellow cards and zero red cards in 57 games is very good considering how much he tackles and he tackles more than Manolas who was like our super defender so yeah this was pretty much everything I could gather from stats and from watching some highlights and stuff uh, I hope you enjoyed this this video and I hope it was helpful Share this around to other people and uh, so that everyone can can see it and ca can see how good of a player he is. Because I think a lot of people think it was a bad decision to buy him just because they don't know anything about him. And that's wrong. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. He might be a super flop. He might not be good at all. Uh, but from seeing all these stats and all this, I am quite hopeful. Uh, he seems like a very good player. He is very highly regarded in in Turkey. And I hope Cengiz Under can help him to integrate into the team and to get along. And I hope we can see him in a couple of, of games early on in the Europa League, in the Cup maybe, but that's a bit later. But maybe in the league even. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this young looking Roma team. Um, so yeah, uh, I will. Uh, I am working on my prediction still. Uh, not sure when I will post it, but um, yeah, that's something to look forward to. And uh, check out my Instagram. The link will be down in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.